Hey guys, welcome to another A-Level Maths Revision video. Today we're taking a look at some applied stuff. Um, so we're taking a look at the very last chapter here in the first year material of the mechanics. So, this chapter looks at variable acceleration. It's not too bad of a topic. Um, so a couple of little tricky parts. Um, but overall, I don't think it's too bad. So, let's just take a look at some uh, exam style questions here. So we've got a particle P which moves on the x-axis. So at time t seconds, the velocity of P is V meters per second in the direction of x increasing. So we've got V defined here, and we know that when t is equal to zero, P is at the origin. So for part A, we want to find the time taken for the particle to come to instantaneous rest. So if the particle comes to instantaneous rest, what we know then is that V is equal to zero. Okay, so when V is equal to zero, so V is 8t minus 2t squared. So what we're saying is that 8t minus 2t squared is equal to 0. So I'll just solve this. If I, if I make the t squared here positive, that's 2t squared. And then we'd minus the 8t onto the other side. That's equal to 0. And if I just factor out here um, 2t, what I then get is t minus 4. This is equal to 0. So solving this, we'd get either t is 0, but the one we want here um, is t equals 4. Okay, So it, it next comes to instantaneous rest. So it's next after 4 seconds. Okay, so that's just part A there to get us started. And then part B here. We're looking for the greatest speed of the particle in the interval um, 0 to 4. Now this one's quite easy due to the symmetry. Um, so due to symmetry here, obviously we've only got four possible values um, that we can take. Oh well really, we've got five. Um, so due to symmetry here, for example, if you consider t equals 1, if you do t equals 1, it's also the same as doing t equals 3 here. You get the same output for v. So what you'd get there is 8 times 1 minus 2 lots of 1 squared. Which This is also gives you the same answer for 3 here as well. Okay, So that gives you 8 minus 2, which is equal to 6. You can verify this if you do t equals 3 as well. So if you sub in 8 times 3 minus 2 lots of 3 squared, you should also get 6. Okay, So what we're essentially looking for here is the largest value. It's clear that when t is 0, because that'll just give us v equals 0. And it won't be t equals 4 either, because we know that's when it comes to instantaneous rest. So in that case, the only possible answer here would be t equals 2. Because if we double check this, what do we get for v? So this is 8 times 2 minus 2 lots of 2 squared here. And if you plug that into your calculator, what you should get here is 8. So because that's 8, that's the largest value for v here in this interval. So in that case, so in the interval defined, or defined, can't speak, the greatest speed is a meters per second there. Okay, so a nice introduction question there just to get aside. You'll see a couple of questions in a, in a moment where it gets obviously a bit more complicated where we have to start applying um, calculus and such. So this question here taken from exercise 11e. So again, same idea, we've got a particle moving in a straight line with constant acceleration. So the first part just wants us to find the acceleration of the particle. So question 5a. So three marks for this. So finding the acceleration. Well, one way of finding the acceleration is using super equations. So V equals U plus AT works well here. And why does it work well? Well, the reason it works well is we have V. Um, we're told V is 13 meters per second. Um, we also have U. The initial velocity is 5 meters per second. And we also have T. So we know t is 2, okay, and t is 2. 
And using that, we can work out the acceleration quite nice. Well, 30 is equal to u, which is 5 plus a times t, which is 2, so that's 2a. Solving here now for a, we get 2a is equal to 8. So in that case, a is equal to a divided by 2, giving us a equals 4. So that's the acceleration of the particle. Um, there are units there. Don't forget units. And then for part B, so we're asked to do this without making use of kinematics. Formula, so essentially you super equations. So in that case, we're going to have to use calculus. So part B here, we want the velocity um, first, because then once we've got the velocity, we can integrate again to get the displacement. Because that's what we're looking for in the question. We want to show that the displacement can be given as this quadratic. So to do that, we're going to have to integrate the acceleration and then integrate the velocity. So if we integrate this here, so the velocity is equal to the integral of the acceleration with respect to time, but with respect to the variable t here. So if you integrate this here, this is the integral of 4 dt. So that'll simply give us 4t plus c. Okay, and don't forget c. It's just a constant of integration. Okay, so C is just a constant of integration. Well, we know when t is equal to zero, so this is just what we're told in the question, when t is equal to zero, we know v is equal to five, okay, our initial velocity. So using that, what we can say then is that 5 is equal to 0 plus c. Okay, because 4 times 0 is just 0. So in that case, that gives us that c is equal to 5. So to finish, the velocity is 4t plus 5. So all we need to do now is integrate one more time and see what the quadratic is that we obtain. Okay, so we know what v is. Let's just clear all this and carry on. So v is equal to 4t plus 5. So in that case, if we integrate this, we obtain the displacement. So s is equal to the integral of v with respect to t. So in our case, that's the integral of 4t plus 5 dt. So now, if we integrate 4t plus 5, what will that give us? Well, that's going to be 4t to the power of 2 divided by 2. So that'll give us... 2t squared. Integrate the 5, so that just give us 5t. And we'd also have, again, another constant of integration. So I'm going to use a different layer. Um, you can use any layer pretty much here. So in that case, m is a constant of integration. Okay. So m is a constant of integration. But obviously, we need to be careful here again. So we know when t is equal to 0, when t is equal to 0, s is equal to 0. OK? The displacement is equal to 0. So in that case, we can use s equals 0 is equal to 0 because 2 times 0 um, squared is just going to be 0, and then 5 times 0 is going to be 0. So 0 is equal to 0 plus 0 plus m, um, or in this case, m is equal to 0. So in that case, s then is just simply 2t squared plus 5t plus 0. So in that case, s is just equal to 2t squared plus 5t. Okay? So in that case, um, your p is 2 and your q is 5. And now it would just be 0. Okay, so if you want to write them down, uh, that's what they'd be there. So 8 marks in total for that. Um, be careful, like it says here, you've got to always just make sure you're not using a method that's not approved for the question. So like we're told in part B, we can't use the kinematics formula. So just be careful for that. Part, uh, well, 
part C, question three here, is quite an, a good question, I think. Um, we've got a remote, a remote control drone um, hovers, so it's like its vertical height above ground level is given by the equation. And we get a little sketch here of a displacement time graph. So we're just asked to determine the maximum and the minimum height of the drone. So if we just edit this sketch a little bit. So the maximum height would appear to be here and the minimum would appear to be here, okay, roughly. Now, if you want the maximum or minimum height of a function, obviously the best way to do that is just to differentiate. So, if we want max or min, to do that, all we do is work out the derivative. Okay, so what would that give us? Well. What I can do is I can differentiate the numerator here term by term and just keep it over this common denominator 50. So the derivative of t to the 4, that would be 4t cubed, minus 36t squared. Like I said, I'm just going to cross the numerator term by term. That gives us 56t. And the 400 would just differentiate to 0. And this is all divided by 50 still. And if we want the maximum or minimum, then what we do is we set the derivative being equal to zero. Okay. So all we need to do now is solve this equation here. So times three by 50, which would just still be equal to zero. So 4t cubed minus 36t squared plus 56t is equal to zero. If we factor out now, this would be 4t squared. In fact, actually, before we do that, let's divide through by four. So what will that give us? So that's going to give us t cubed uh, minus 9t squared plus 40. And that's equal to 0. Okay. And now let's start factoring out. So if I factor out a t first, we get t squared minus 9t plus 40. So that should be 14 t there, sorry. And that's equal to 0. And then let's factorize this quadratic here. So t times t minus 2 times t minus 7 there. Okay, so that's the quadratic factorized. So in that case, we have three points. We have t equals 0. That's that solution there. We have t equals 2. And we also have, and we also have t equals 7. So if we look at our graph again, in that case, We'd assume this is the 2, so that's going to be 2, and we'd assume this one here, obviously we've been so close to 8, is going to be the 7. Okay. So in that case, what we need to do then is just plug our t values in here back into our original x, Okay, and that'll give us the height. So we clear everything and then just carry on. So when t equals 2, so we're going to use when t equals 2 because obviously that's going to be the higher one than 0. What we get then is that x is equal to 2 to the 4 minus 12 times 2 cubed plus 28 lots of 2 squared plus 400. And we divide all of this by 50. So just plug this into your calculator. What you should get here is 8.64. Okay, so 8.64 there. And then let's do when t equals 7. So what would I get? So just plug 7 into your um, x equals and just replace t. So that's 7 to the 4. I'm not sure I did that one in brackets. Minus 12 lots of 7 cubed. Um, plus 28 lots of 7 squared we add 400. Divide it all by 50. Again, punch this into your calculator, see what you get. So that gives you 1.14. Okay, so these are our two different heights. So in that case, we just need to differentiate which one's the max, which one's the min, which clearly the minimum height would be the smaller of the two. Okay, so therefore the minimum height is just simply going to be 1.14 
Are we working meters? Yeah, meters. Okay, so 1.14 meters. And then the maximum height would simply be 8.64 meters there. Okay, so you can see problem solving questions, take them step by step. But as soon as you see this word mentioned about the maximum or minimum of a function, straight away for thinking calculus differentiating there. Okay.